Hey, this is Chip from The Real Dirt. Once again, we are gonna have an excellent conversation on my favorite subject, ganja. That's right. And today I kind of have an unconventional guest, uh, my good friend, Lisa Beyer. And I know I say many of these people are my good friend, but Lisa really is a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, uh, Lisa is not really involved directly in the cannabis industry. She's kind of like me, she services cannabis people. Lisa runs the Buyer Group, which is a PR group. Um, she is also the author of Social PR Secrets and Digital Detox Secrets. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, Chip. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm, man, I was so glad when you reached out and, and uh, booked the time to be on the podcast. We always have such great conversations. And uh, I, you know, I'm like, what does Lisa want to talk to me about on The Real Dirt? Right. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, marketing and PR in the cannabis industry yes, and yeah. more specifically about uh, a, an article that me and my wife, Jessica, just had um, written and put on uh, the Associated Press. Maybe we can explain that and get uh, get all into that. So, uh, so Lisa, tell me tell me a little bit about the buyer group. Tell me what you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. So the buyer group is named after. My last name is Lisa Beyer, and so nobody can really believe that, They're, especially when you go to make a major purchase like a car or a house. Yeah. <laughs> Baker, right? In the same boat. Baker and Beyer, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Beyer Group is a social PR agency, and how are we different than most public relations agencies is we uh, integrate social media and search marketing into the PR strategy. So I was an early adapter of um, taking traditional PR and um, just kind of turning it upside down and integrating digital. I thought everybody would be in the same kind of pace as I was when you know Google first came out and we would we could leverage things like um, optimization and then Facebook came out and from a business standpoint, you can get exposure through your, your social network. But I was wrong and still today, 10 years later, a lot of PR agencies, most are you know still focusing on traditional. There's nothing wrong with traditional and a great example of traditional PR is what happened with, with you and how you got the coverage in Associated Press. And that the way it used to be was you pitch the journalist and you get the story and you get exposure to your audience. So what you got is like a home run in the PR world. But what we do is we then take into the PR world, social and search. That's what our agency does and that's how we're different. So back, you know, one of the things I'm really interested in is the organic, uh, or organic traffic and organic movement of stuff like this. I mean, I have tried to, because in the cannabis industry, we can't pay for advertising the same way. And you have some mini cannabis clients. Uh, I can't necessarily go to Facebook or Instagram and pay to have uh, uh, my advertisements put in for the real dirt or for Cultivate Colorado or for Cultivate OKC or for Grower Soil, even though those are all ancillary businesses of mine that don't involve cannabis at all, right? Uh, it, it's hard for us, right? Yeah. Um, how, okay, let, 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 let's back it up a little bit and I'm gonna ask my question. So, so for those that we've alluded to this a little bit, you can look this up on our website. You'll see it. There was an AP article written um, about uh, you know about kind of people moving to Oklahoma or you know this kind of the state of the the cannabis economy around the country. Um, how would tell tell us how the AP works? You know this. You you know this better than me. What is the AP? What is the Associated Press? Yeah. So the Associated Press is basically you know a network of um, other media outlets. So they're basically the top tier. When the Associated Press writes something, it gets syndicated na nationally. To whoever picks it up, that's mm -hmm. kind of part of the Associated Press. So it might appear in the Orlando Sentinel where I live, or it might be Herald or um, Associated Press, um, Associated um, Publications. So, okay. you know, to get something in the AP or into, let's just say, you know, there's other other syndicated types of um, outlets that you could get into, but the AP is like, you know, a home run. So to get that- In the movies, they call it like on the wire. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Um, and what's interesting about this, you know, how you were sourced in that article is that you can see, and this is the big mistake when it comes to public relations, is that the story wasn't necessarily a feature on your company. Um, they, mm -hmm. they they featured you in in their story. Their angle was about how your area is, you know, basically becoming a hotbed and why and right. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and so that's the whole thing with public relations is that you want to be sourced in an article and, mm -hmm. uh, but to have the idea that somebody is gonna and it happens to have like just a complete profile as like an ad on your company is. Um, kind of a misconception and it's, it's not the right expectation to have with editorial like coverage like what you you and your wife got for your for your business that's it's awesome and it takes a long time to get something like in the in the oh, we, we we tried this over and over again and you're professional you, you get that you get to do this but like oh, for a couple of years we sent out letters to everybody we we're like hey we can talk about this subject, this subject, this subject. If you need an expert on anything cannabis, if you have a question on, and, and literally nobody, right, would call it, call us back. <laughs> and then just out of nowhere, this guy yeah. shows up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, he's fascinated by all of the information because, I mean, you know, we've had numerous conversations about it. I, I have a high level understanding of cannabis and you can ask me pretty much any question and I will give you a, a background detailed story that you never even knew existed because I am fascinated with every aspect of cannabis and involved with every aspect too, right? I have my finger on the pulse. So I was always just surprised that nobody wanted to talk to me. And as I read all of these articles that were reproduced all over the country, all over the world, I'm like, this is just crap. I can't believe that they're saying this or they're interviewing this person. You know, and, and it was almost just like they stumbled upon us, right, a little bit. And, you know, they're like, oh, as soon as the guy, uh, Sean Murphy, came and started talking to us, you know, he doesn't know anything about weed. He maybe has consumed it or something in the past. I can't speak for him. Uh, but he was truly fascinated in the conversation. And we had like two, three hours worth of interview. And unfortunately, the story that came out was totally different from the kind of interviews we had. Yeah. Right. It, it was, I don't know, it was, it, it, they just broke, they found the best thing Angle. they thought could sound great quote from me yeah. about my landlord going on vacation, which man, I, I thought I probably had other bit great quotes, but they, they liked that one for some right. reason. Right, right. <laughs> right. So, you know, you, you do this professionally. How do you get, how do you get that media person to like say the things you want them to say about you. Just like you were saying, it can't, it's not a feature on your, yourself, but it's, you're just featured in their story. Yeah. Well, I mean, one way is the clients we work with, we recommend doing at least one newsworthy press release a month. And that's just, that is something that you can distribute um, on a, as a paid distribution on the wire. So mm. that gets put out in Google News, and then mm -hmm. that also um, journalists subscribe to certain categories. So you know, there's a category for CBD and cannabis. So anything that any news that comes out, they subscribe to it. They kind of scan it, and you know, at least you're staying in front of them as an expert source. They might not think that your news is news for them, for their audience. Um, but what we try to do is do it as, as, as a, in a journalistic style. So we make sure that what we're reporting on and what we're announcing on behalf of our clients is newsworthy and has a trending angle that might be trending for, you know, maybe it's Black Friday, you know, depending on, on the, um, or, you know, if it's um, CBD day or something like that, or cannabis month, um, mm -hmm. that tying in something newsworthy, but staying in front of, um, a very curated list of journalists that are reporting on basically, you know, stories that would be relevant to your audience, to your brand's audience. So it doesn't have to be a big list. It could be 10 or 15 of your top, you know, top journalists that you know are covering um, your, your angles. Um, and then the paid distribution takes care of the masses. So it gets you in Google News. Um, and we, my favorite word, is optimization. So we make sure that all the content 
that we write from a PR standpoint, journalistic standpoint is optimized with keywords that journalists and also your audience will be searching for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sure that AP article is in Google, indexed in Google. It's a, you know, very high authority source. So it's going to outrank anything. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, organic traffic, so you're talking about organic, which is PR would be considered organic. And then there's the paid side, advertising side. So that would be Google ads, that would be, you know, Facebook ads, that would be, you know, traditional ads. It used to be PR and advertising were like church and state, like the, the two didn't really cross over. Today it's more blended. So we do do paid campaigns for the clients that we can, but it used to be like, we're just 100% organic and we're trying to get our clients in the news. Third party credibility is the best type of credibility. It's considered like eight times more valuable mm -hmm. um, than paid, anything paid that you could do. So even if you could do paid, you still want to do PR because it helps in your SEO, it helps in your credibility, it helps in public perception. Um, so you want to get to those audiences through those third party outlets, whether it be the journalist, or it might be, you know, through something that would be in a, you know, TV or podcast, anything like that. So the, the title of the article on uh, me and Jessica was called something like people move to the Bible belt to avoid high cannabis taxes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And we, I don't think we said any of those things in any of the info you know, but, uh, uh, that was the hot topic by bull belt cannabis and taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's why it really went everywhere. I think, I mean, yeah. it went everywhere, New York times, San Francisco Chronicle, like it went everywhere. It might get picked up again. Like they, they re-syndicate things. Mm -hmm. it, it does really well. So there's a chance you're going to still see the pickups coming. You know, but we've already seen like, uh, you know, the added benefit of it. We've gotten multiple phone calls. We've done some pretty good business immediately afterwards. Like it was, it was really great for us. You know, the, uh, uh, the, the credibility that you're just quoted in something like that. I know it's, it's odd because I don't see it as a good, I like Sean Murphy, don't get me wrong, but I don't see it as the best article and I'm sure it was edited out of his hands. You know, it doesn't really scratch the surface about what's going on, the cannabis industry and economy. But because of all that, I've had two other different, like pretty, you know, big podcast people call me up with, you know, hundreds of thousands of listeners wanting to talk to me about exactly that. Exactly. So that right? is, that's the perfect example of the momentum that takes place once you get one. And it doesn't even, I mean, you got a home run, okay? You got a home run with this AP. Um, but, <laughs> but let's just say you didn't get a home run. Let's just say okay. you got to first base and you were okay. on a podcast that was very niche and, um, mm -hmm. you know, or let's just say that. Like the Real Dirt podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and let's just say you, or you got picked up in, you know, maybe it's just a local paper. Mm -hmm. That that is typically the path. Like, so typically you don't come out of the gates getting a home run, but if you do, right. Maybe, but typically mm -hmm. the path is you start local, you start on small niche types of publications or outlets, and then somebody from, you know, New York Times or USA Today that's covering that beat hears that and it's like, hey, this is one of my expert sources I'm going to use for this story, or this is an angle I came up with, mm -hmm. or they do a Google search and they see your press release and, you know, talking about you just expanded to you know, this area and this, here's why, you know, you can be your own brand journalist, which is yeah. what you're doing actually right now um, by having this podcast, you're your own brand journalist, but, you know, so this is an example. Podcasting is a great example of you can have your own show and create the, and control the message, or you can also pitch to be a guest on somebody else's podcast. And that is either one of those is considered you know, what I consider is public relations and third party credibility, and you're controlling your message when you have your own show. Now, most people consider public PR is it's, they don't realize how much is behind the scenes of it. Right. And some people even think that it's unfair the way that the situation is manipulated, but you know, it's just the system that, that, that we, that we are all working in. Right. Do you, do you have some like hacks for the cannabis industry on on how they can 
participate in this bigger PR industry that that we we seem to be restricted from. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever size company you are, you could be just starting out. You could be doing this just for your personal brand. Public relations is accessible to any budget, any brand. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a budget for it, you can do it in-house. If you have the budget for it, mm -hmm. you can outsource. But what I would tell anybody is, um, you know, focus first on your PR, create your, create your list. You could create a list right now of your top five by doing a Google search of like who's covering your brand, who, I mean, who's covering your, your industry and where, and just start out really small and very focused. Um, the beauty with public relations and, and, and doing your own, even if you start writing a, um, a blog, you know, and write an article once, once a week or twice a month, and that article, then you send it out to the different journalists. You could do that on your own. And they'll eventually, you know, you start following them on social media, um, create a Twitter list for the, for the journalists that you're following. These are some of the things we do for our clients, but you can also do it on your own. Um, so when you can't advertise, you know, it, it stinks because you can't put that, that layer on top of public relations like a lot of other brands and industries can do, but it doesn't mean don't do anything. Like doing some sort of PR and some sort of, you know, what we're talking about right now when it comes to PR is media outreach and trying the goal that we're talking about right now, media outreach with the goal being to get picked up by a publication. I can't remember, did the AP article have a link back to any of your sites, your domains? No, it, it, it didn't. It did mention, you know, the Real Dirt podcast and we got significant amount of uh, traffic over that. And okay. did, it did not, however, mention Cultivate Colorado or Cultivate Oklahoma City. Okay. Um, yeah, didn't really mention my, and I tried to, I tried. Every time I spoke, I was like, CultivateColorado.com. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if you could go back with the AP, you might have a little bit of pushback, but, um, you know, whenever we get articles for our clients or mm -hmm. write or, you know, we always ask for a link back because that's going to help get you like super high quality referring traffic back to your site mm -hmm. and also helps in SEO. Um, so coverage that you get will help you um, if you get a link in SEO. If you don't, I mean, you see the result of the AP even without the, the link, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. It was, it, it was great. You know, we, we have, so let's 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 talk about one of my favorite subjects, native content, which is uh, content that you create yourself that is supposed to mimic or look like news stories, right? And and this is this is mostly what I've done, but none none of it really has been as, as successful, right? Or I mean, people have read some of them, but. Uh, uh, how do you cross over from that, you know, to make that native content, you know, appeal and look like it's real? Well, I mean, one is I have to, you know, I could take a look at it, but um, coming at it with a journalist type of approach. So, it, you know, here's what I tell everybody on my staff is that we're, we're not marketing. We're not talking like a marketer. We're not trying to sell something. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. If it doesn't sound like a title, like a headline you would see in the Wall Street Journal or USA Today, and it doesn't have like a hook, lead in, angle, mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. have, you know, be truly newsworthy, then right, get the attention of our audience. That's great advice because so many, so many times it turns into a sales letter of yeah. some sort, right? That, that really is great advice is to, to make it newsworthy, even if it is native, native style content. Yeah. Another tip is to include relevant data, those so statistics, reports, surveys, even if it's your own data, you know, that that's another, you know, everybody, you know, is looking for some sort of like a number or a figure, turning it into an infographic, making it super visual, adding a, an image or adding a video to what you're doing. You know, people are, you know, would rather watch a video, they're getting lazy, they don't want to they don't want to necessarily read. So, you know, creating a YouTube channel and, and, you know, making, you know, content that is going to be how to type of content or, you know, there's so many different ways you can slice it or dice it, but, you know, speaking of organic and the reason why we call the buyer group a social PR agency and not just a PR agency is because we 
take social media and leverage it into the strategy. And so, you know, it used to be, you know, kind of like dialing for dollars. Like we would have all the journalists that were pitching, we would have their, their number and we would call them and, hey, did you get my press release? You know, whether it was mailed or emailed, like, you know, back in the day. And, you know, think about it, like who has a landline? You know, how do you look up somebody's mobile number? You know, journalists are operating off their mobile smartphone. Um, they're, they're, they don't have a listed number. So, you know, an email, every, I mean, even the AP writer, I would be interested to see like what email he used because even they use Twitter. Gmail. I believe Twitter is how we really got like kept yeah. in contact with the guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so the new media relations today is reaching out through Twitter, reaching out through DMs on LinkedIn, um, mm -hmm. creating and cultivating relationships through social media because that is the new type, of, that's the new media relations. So we're very hyper-focused on um, your Twitter, your, your social media network, whatever network that your audience is on. So making sure that it's optimized, making sure that you have a Twitter list following, let's just say certain reporters or making sure that you're following um, and interacting with, like mm -hmm. being super giving. Um, so, you know, this guy, Sean, before he, he actually came out with a story and you were talking to him, if you were following him on Twitter and like sharing some of his, his stories that he was coming out with, he's going to be like, they're trying to get a name, you know, make a name for themselves too, from a personal branding standpoint, all these reporters, the more exposure they get, then mm -hmm. somebody else wants to hire them, right? Yeah, so, that was some of the best advice I've had about contacting reporters is to to make sure that that you're tell them that you're trying to help them that it's a service you're providing to them for free that you don't want any glory and you know eventually like your helping hand it'll it'll lead to a positive benefit for you exactly. had not quite worked for me but maybe with sean i mean me and sean had great conversations he you know and i am truly disappointed at the awful news coverage and media and facts about cannabis i, I hope he does call me in the, in the future and you know ask for some clarifications on some this and that yeah yeah i mean i would cultivate that you know keep going with that relationship for sure and that's the thing that that's, you know maybe he knows somebody that's writing a story for you know another type mm -hmm. of um, angle that you know he could refer you as a source. So I would definitely send him an email or however you guys are communicating. Right. Hey, okay, great story. Thank you so much for thinking of me. If you know any of your colleagues that are writing and need an expert in cannabis, please, if you could refer me, I would be greatly appreciative. Is there anything yeah. I can do for you? You know? I, I, absolutely. And, yeah. and, you know, a big thing I uh, believe in, in in business and in life is making friends. Yes. You know, and it, 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 you know, if, if you can be friendly with people that you do business with, then man, you're in the best of circumstances. Uh, it's also, I think, the number one way to gain uh, customer loyalty and develop like real customer relationships is, man, be friendly, be friends with everybody, and then they want to talk to you. It's right? true. It's true. I mean, the new, um, the new funnel, the new marketing funnel um, is, you know, once somebody becomes a customer, it doesn't mean that, oh, you're on to the next prospect. Like you really need to nurture your customers. Yeah. And lifetime value is lifetime value for exactly. sure. Exactly. And public relations doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, getting exposure and third party credibility for your prospects. It's, it's also for your customers to be, hey, you know, I know this brand or I know these people that are being quoted. It makes them feel like, wow, I made the right choice. And mm -hmm. um, it just, it, you know, helps solidify the relationship with your customers when they see that you're getting exposure or getting quoted as an expert source or your, your product is getting listed as top 10, blah, 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 type of thing. Yeah, as, as silly as it sounds, you know, when, when I started all this, Michael, uh, Michael Lovich and, and Hollis Carter, they suggested I do the real dirt. And, you know, one of the first things Hollis said was, are you comfortable being the guy? And I'm like, well, what do you, what do you mean the guy? And you're like, well, man, there's going to be, it could be a lot of attention. I think you're going to kill this. Are you really comfortable with it? And absolutely. Right. Like I want to tell, you know, the cannabis story. I want to talk to my customers. I want them to come up to me and say, say, Hey, but many people, they don't want that and they're embarrassed about sales or it's hard for them 
you know, to, to, to put their neck out a little mm -hmm. bit and see if they're fail, you know, or they're scared of failure. And, and we've got 70, 80 episodes of The Real Dirt. And wow, I guarantee you they're not all great. <laughs> but it do, it doesn't really matter it's uh you know you you do have to like stick your neck out a, a bit in, if you want to be seen you right? do you got to ask people you got to say hey this is me this is what i'm doing hey we're here in in whatever manner uh, uh and, and many people that's their number one problem that they have in their business is they've got a great idea, they've got great business, they've got great product, they've got great sales, they've got great, but they don't want to tell people they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's why sometimes you need help. You need, you know, an agency or you, mm -hmm. need, or you need somebody to be like, this is actually news what you're doing. Did you know that what you're doing right now is newsworthy? And, you know, some of our clients are like, that's newsworthy? People are going to be interested in that? I'm like, yeah, that's actually like a very good angle. And that's something that we should write about. And, you know, then, you know, so they, you need, you need to get out of your own way sometimes and let other people that, you know, see things differently come in and help, help you come up with the newsworthy angles and help you come up with the quotes and come up with something that might be right in front of you, but you just don't see it. You know, you're probably, your business is probably similar to mine. When people come into you for the first time, they probably have some common misconceptions about, about what to do. Do, it, do. do cannabis people or customers in general have a, are there some common misconceptions about PR that you could talk about? Sure. Well, I mean, not just cannabis, I'll just start just the common, most common misconception about public relations is that it is not a short play. It is a long play. It is mm -hmm. a long-term commitment. It's something that you never stop doing. So yeah, maybe you can't afford to have an agency doing it for you at first, but you move into that, or maybe you're working with an agency, you need to pivot um, for whatever, And but you don't stop. You just, you go to plan B of PR and you're always doing it. So the biggest problem, you know, misconception is somebody's like, oh, we really want to do PR. We want to try it out for three months and we wanna see what happens after three months. So that's mistake number one. Don't even, there's no reason to just try it out. Just don't even do mm -hmm. it because after three months and then you just stop because you're not really sure what's happening. It takes a nothing while. may happen in three months. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, it just has to be a long-term commitment. It has to be a long play and it doesn't have to be, you know, breaking the bank type of thing, um, you know, there's books, like there's a book that I would recommend called Free PR that was um, co-written by Cameron Harold that you could pick up. Um, and that's like a do-it-yourself type of thing. Anybody could do it. You don't need a degree in public relations. I'm not trying to, you know, minimize what you need to, to you know, my back. The access is there now. Anybody there really now. can do it if they like it get is. on Twitter, get on Facebook, get yeah. on Instagram, get on LinkedIn. You can do it. You can do it. And, you know, just like you're doing your podcasts, you're consistent. You have your, your episodes that come out on the days that they come out every week or every month. PR is the same way. So that's why I said earlier, you know, we recommend to our clients. It's, it's part of our program. One press release a month is going out consistently to Google News and the journalists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and unlike advertising, this is another misconception, unlike advertising where you're controlling the the visual, you're controlling the message, you're controlling the call to action, you're going to see immediate gratification from most advertisements, from Google ads and Facebook ads. You will see traffic, you'll see a, some sort of a conversion happening. Mm -hmm. With public relations, it's not that type of KPI. You can't, it's, it's not a fair KPI to say, okay, for every dollar I spend in PR, I need to see, see an ROI that same month in products off the shelf. Like, it's just, right. you have that mentality, let's just not even talk, okay? Let's right. just <laughs> yeah. No, because it it it, uh, it is not something that you will see a return on investment immediately. At. You'll have like spikes of it, you know. Um, it's, it's, the, it's there. It's just not, um, it's not black and white like it is with advertising. Uh, so yeah, if you spend three months on PR and, and you stop, so what happened behind the scenes? What mm -hmm. happened behind the scenes is you're in front of a bunch of journalists that you wouldn't have been in front of. You know, mm -hmm. something might happen in six months if you stop because of what you right. did the first three months. And then you're going to be like, oh, 
I wish I would have kept going because this is all, this all could be this momentum, you know, could all be going, but no, maybe you'll get something once, who knows? There's, there's, it's, there's no way to really predict. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to keep at it, man. You just got to keep at it. And, and, and also count those little victories because we've had quite a few little victories over time, but nothing big like this, no home run. Um, but, you know, the cumulative impact of it all really does help. When people ask me about something, I'm like, oh, go to my Instagram. And they look at it and they're like, oh, you got 17,000 followers. Oh, you've made 3,000 posts. It adds this legitimacy to it in the same way with Facebook and Facebook posts. And, you know, because social media is our free PR. It is. Right? That's our free PR. It's definitely free PR. You can do it mm -hmm. yourself. You could buy a book to show you how to do it. Um, like I said earlier, my favorite word is optimization. So use use strategic hashtags to get more exposure, to get that Instagram post is to get you know more in front of like your audience. Um, there's also hashtags that you, that you can use or tags that you can use to get a journalist attention. So by tagging it like mm -hmm. hashtag news or hashtag cannabis news or right. you know, they get into that stream. And so journalists are following hashtags. They're, they are following keywords through Google alerts and um, a variety of different sources that they use to follow like what's happening in an industry, but they also follow hashtags. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I know we're kind of running out of time, but I just want to cover two other ways. So that you yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. yeah. So influencer marketing is one. So if you mm -hmm. have um, using other people that are influential, so the media would be, I, we put the media under the category of influencers, right? They're mm -hmm. one form of influencer. So then there might be two or three other types of influencers that you can you know, have in, in your, um, as part of your strategy to help get the word out and help maybe publish things on their Instagram, you know, and tag you and things like that. So, so that's one. And then um, the second is, so podcasts, like obviously you can be a host or you can be a guest, but you can also sponsor podcasts. So yeah. that's one way to kind of get around the um, getting exposure where you're not on it, you're not hosting it, but you're sponsoring an episode or sponsoring, you know, certain part of the of the podcast yeah and I, I, we do sponsorship here uh, at the real dirt so if anyone's ever interested in a sponsorship program please ask us here at the real dirt you can contact travis at the real dirt dot com <laughs> shameless 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 you, wow lisa this has been such a great conversation today so half of my listeners are in the cannabis business um you know half of those people uh, you know, you work directly in the cannabis business. Um, this has been a really great episode and it's really made me think about how much, you know, cannabis people need this other resources that they don't have, this other encouragement that they don't have. It's often hard to find real, you know, legitimate and professional people like yourself that will shoot people straight forward and not just say, oh yeah, 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 I'm gonna take your money. Oh, I'm gonna take your money. And you know, that's a, a, the industry's kind of plagued with that. Um, but I, I really thank you for joining me today. Can, if people wanna reach you, how, how do they reach you? Well, you can um, go to thebuyergroup.com and that's my the website for the social PR agency. You can also go on Amazon. You can buy my book called Social PR Secrets and the whole book is basically um, about optimization and how to get free organic tra traffic and mm. using PR and social media and SEO. Which I, I, actually, I can't believe I haven't read your book yet. Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I will order it today. It's extremely actionable. So you don't have to read the whole book to get something out of it. You can be like, oh, all I need is to read the Facebook for PR chapter and right. read that. But um, the, the forward was written by Guy Kawasaki, which I'm super proud of. So reach out to the buyer group or on Instagram, Lisa Buyer. Awesome, Lisa. Well, thank you for joining us. And listeners, thank you for joining us on a, another episode of The Real Dirt. Thanks again, Lisa. Thank you.